Uh, thank you. Uh, before beginning my questions, uh, uh, several references have been made to a letter which I received in uh, early November from General Austin, which laid out a series of steps that had been taken. I'd like to submit that letter for the record, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Secretary, it strikes me that this is an exceedingly complex challenge. I guess that's pretty obvious. But part of the problem is we want to defeat ISIS, but we want to do it in such a way that doesn't propagate their ideology around the Muslim world. Uh, and that really makes it very difficult. Uh, I think the San Bernardino attack is a good example. There's no evidence that I've heard that that attack was directed by ISIS. Instead, these people were self-radicalized and took it upon themselves to perform these heinous acts. The question is, how do we, how do we keep moderate Muslims, the vast majority of the 1.6 billion Muslims in the world, from falling into the ISIS trap. And ISIS has made it clear that part of their strategy is to provoke us to westernizing this conflict and making it a war of America and the West against, against Islam, and thereby pushing uh, heretofore moderate Muslims in their direction. Uh, so this gets to the question of how do we take Raqqa, for example. And my understanding is that there's no inclination to use a large contingent of US troops. But there is a recognition, as the President has already acknowledged, that there are places for US troops in a special forces kind of setting. Is this the kind of that's, calculation that, that you're making? That, that's exactly correct, yes. Uh, how do we, the gap in the strategy, it seems to me, from the beginning, and I, I say gap, that's not a criticism, that's just the fact, is where do we get ground troops in Syria? Ground troops are available in Arab ground troops, Muslim ground troops are available in, in, in Iraq, the Iraqi security forces, and the Peshmerga. In Syria, there's, there's, there's not an available force, and that's why it seems to me the whole issue of getting rid of Assad is a key part of this calculation. That Assad is the lightning rod that in effect created ISIS, mm -hmm. or in part. And uh, if we can work with other parties, particularly Russia, to move Assad off the stage, then you've got an Arab army, a Muslim army in in. Syria, it's the opposite, all of the opposition except perhaps El Nusra, and the, the Syrian army. That's why it seems to me that's a key part of it. But the question that our colleagues are asking is time. We, somehow we've got to accelerate the timetable. We can't wait years for Assad to leave and we turn the guns of the, of the opposition and the Syrian army on ISIL. Would you, do, you, do you share that? Uh, I, I, I do. I mean, I, as you and here, I'm all for urgency and acceleration of the military campaign. Uh, and, and I'd like to see that, too, on the political side. It's trickier. Uh, Secretary Kerry's trying to work toward that end. Um, but it is exactly as you say. If we could get a political transition that brought the Syrian uh, armed forces, that part of which it would be appropriate to carry forward into a new Syria, plus the moderate opposition, you'd have uh, a, a force that could both clear Syrian territory of radicals and and eliminate the civil war, which is what fuels the violent this extremism in the first place, and have a, a governance of Syria that the Syrian people deserve. But there's one there's one piece of this, and you mentioned it. You listed a long series of things that we needed to do, and at the very end, you said information. And that's where we're losing right now. I, I heard a figure recently that ISIS posts something like 90,000 posts a day in social media. And uh, just reading a, a piece about a young man in the US, 17 years old, who found this ISIS community online and he's being encouraged and moved forward. And, and uh, I know it's not in the Department of Defense, but we, this country has to do a much better job, it seems to me, of countering the story that ISIS is telling uh, to attract young people across uh, across the world. We're not only engaged in a military war here, we're engaged in a war of ideas. And right now, uh, I think we're somewhere close to a stalemate on the military side, but we're losing the war of ideas. 
May I just note, um, uh, uh, Senator, that it is for that very reason that yesterday I got together uh, with uh, the Secretary of Homeland Security, the Director of the FBI, the Director of National Intelligence, and we were talking exactly about that, how, what the information war. Now, you're right. It's not principally a defense thing. We don't operate here at home. We do operate in the cyber domain. I alluded to that. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're at war, and we have authorities to use our cyber command uh, in this case uh, and uh, are, are identifying opportunities uh, to do that. At the same time, I just, I have to say, the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, and, and, and uh, the Director of National Intelligence are working intensely. They were before. Uh, San Bernardino, they're working now intensely on exactly this question of these people who are, who are, um, uh, if we, if we win, sitting a, with a keyboard if, somewhere if we, in the if United we win States. a town in Syria and lose 10,000 kids in France or Belgium or Florida or Ohio, uh, that's not victory. I, I, I'd hope in, in the councils of war, you will continue to press that point of view. Thank Will you. Do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.